Hey everybody, welcome to the Video Game Show. I'm Sean. So in a recent interview with Shigeru Miyamoto, one of the uh, the big boss dudes, the big heads at Nintendo, done everything from Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Mario, um, he has stated that he doesn't know if he has the energy to deal to work on the next Mario game. He says that with the Mario games, it comes a lot of you know time, preparation. It it takes a lot out of you. So he doesn't know if he's going to be able to work on it. And uh, this, to me, is a little bit of a sad news because he's put his you know his thumbprint on the series. And I, I don't know what I, if I can imagine it without him at least connected into it some way. I would hope that he'd stay on in some aspect of it, maybe producing, uh, maybe a consultant, some of those, some way that's near that, because I would love to see him stay on it. It would be very sad if he just, you know, um, distanced himself from it completely. He has stated that he wants to work on smaller projects, more um, original products uh, that, that he can just put himself into that aren't going to take the time and energy that Mario would. So um, hopefully this doesn't come to fruition. Hopefully there are, uh, you know, ways that we can keep him on Mario and hopefully we don't have to deal with this in the future hopefully we can keep him connected to it somehow alright guys so next week the PS4 launches and the week after that the Xbox One launches so we're right in the thick of things and both consoles have announced that they're going to need day one patch. This is really interesting, really, it's, it's a real big deal for a lot of people. Um, there was a lot of complaints and a lot of uh, talk about how not everybody has internet connections and they don't want the always online and they, you know, they want to have regular consoles. But both of the consoles are going to need day one patches to do a lot of things. Uh, the PS4, you're going to need one to do one of the biggest things, in my opinion, is use the Blu-ray player to watch Blu-ray movies. You're also going to need to use other things on the PlayStation 4 as well. The Xbox One needs a patch that if you don't get it you're essentially not going to be able to do anything you're going to have a big paperweight so this is uh, really big news really uh, bad news for the people out there that were complaining that don't have internet because without these patches those people aren't going to be able to use their systems in the in the full manner that they that is expected um, with both of the patches are going to be able to come the uses of, of a certain apps as well um, so this is big news it's really scary for some of the people out there but um, I mean don't fret it's it, it hopefully it's very painless and it's just the one little download and it gets everything working the way it's supposed to um, that's what I'm hoping for I'm crossing my fingers and I'm still looking forward to both systems very much so but also with this uh, this this uh, little bit of drama there's been some stuff regarding um, HD uh, output 1080p 720p regarding the PS4 and the Xbox One's different games are, shoot, are, are coming native at 720 and native at 1080 um, I already spoke about this about Call of Duty Ghosts and whether or not that's going to be affecting your purchase decisions well one of the launch games for Xbox One Dead Rising 3 is, is going to be doing the same thing as Call of Duty Ghosts it's going to be native 720p upscale to 1080p um, but this one's actually going to be at 30 frames per second not the 60 frames per second that Ghosts is at so with this, it is another question. Is this uh, affecting your decisions to buy an Xbox One or go with the PlayStation 4? As I said last week, each one has different capabilities that might sh outshine the other. Um, so it, I definitely think we should take our time before you, you know, bombard one with negative prey, you know, negative comments or one with just purely positive. But for now, this is how it's going to be. Like I said before, let's get a year into the console, let's get two years into the console and see what the, the developers can actually come, come up with regarding all the games and get them running them at their optimum speed, the optimum graphical um, fidelity, uh, the best frames per second. Let's uh, give it this some time before we get to that point where we, you know, just exclude one or the other. So one of my favorite games had a special day yesterday. Yesterday was November 7th. It was also known as N7 Day to those of Bioware. N7 is a day when a Marine in the world of Mass Effect passes their testing and is, is given that uh, stature of N7 status. Um, so to yesterday, which was N7 Day for us, we're not all part of the Mass Effect world. Some of the, the creators and some of the developers in, at Bioware actually tweeted some pictures of the upcoming Mass Effect game. They are teasing us with a couple of little things in the background. They make it a little hard to see what's going on, but if you look pretty closely, you can see a little bit of you know a little bit of stuff that's gonna, that may excite you. I know that I'm excited for whatever Mass Effect comes out with next because I love the series. It's one of my favorite of all time, and I just can't wait till they come out with new content for that series. And last but not least, guys, I, this week I do have a video game of the week. It is Call of Duty Ghosts. 
I was able to pick it up midnight release on Tuesday morning and I went home finished it off that I finished it off in that day actually um, I played the campaign I played it all the way through and I gotta say I really enjoyed it it did come back and, and you know remind me of a few of their previous games from Infinity Ward uh, Modern Warfare 2 Modern Warfare 3 even though it did remind me of the previous games uh, in certain aspects, they added new stuff in there that I haven't seen in any of the Call of Duty games yet. Now, I haven't played every single one of the Call of Duty games, but I haven't seen some of the stuff yet. It was really cool when it happened to me. Specifically, one of the missions that you have to play, you have to go through the town, you're trying to capture the bad guy. And essentially, he blows the dam and water comes and floods the town. In this, there are sections where you're creeping around the town through buildings that are flooded and the, the water's waist high. So it's really cool that this situation actually happened. You're able to crouch and kind of go underwater with your crouch and pretty much uh, sneak uh, and assassinate some of the bad guys. I like that a lot. A different little game, a little gameplay style. I really liked it. This could carry it over to other sections of the game where there was water and you can like go around. Um, I, there was one part where I actually kind of flanked the, the bad guys climbed up and shot them literally from three feet away uh, on their flank and it was really cool I like that aspect one of the other aspects I liked about this is they actually based a lot of the story on this connection between father and the two and two sons now in a lot of these first person shooters you're not going to get the best games in the world but your um, campaign story wise but you, they give you enough to drive it forward and in this one I really enjoyed it because they gave you this emotional feeling to it and it made you want to you know um, finish what was going on. I don't want to spoil it, but it makes you want to finish what's going on for your brother, for your dad, for, for your own character. You want to do that for them. And I like that. I like that nice change of pace. The game takes place in the near future, so there are some futuristic elements to some of the guns. I really like that. It's a nice little difference in the guns compared to some of the previous ones in Modern Warfare 3. But there are also some things in there that they took away, which uh, from a certain point of view it's understandable because of the story. Um, how of what happened and how the U.S. has been crippled pretty much. Um, so that's understandable in a certain aspect, but at the same time, it's like, oh man, I wish I still had that. Um, so, so I do like how it is in the future slightly, and they um, continued with the progression of the weapons. Um, I really enjoyed that. I really liked uh, the missions where you're in space, you're in the water. They added a different variety of missions. It all wasn't straight mission, 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 ground, get here to here, get here to here, get here to here. A lot of it was do this and do that. But you had different environments, different settings, different uh, atmospheres to each mission. I really liked that. I really enjoyed it. So overall, I really liked the campaign. It really, uh, you know, it hits you enough to get, keep you going um, with the father-son's uh, effect there. And, and the new improvements to the, the campaign as a whole with the guns, the weapons, and the settings were, were really done well. I really enjoyed it. Now jumping over to the multiplayer, I've been playing it a bit this week and I have to say I'm not the best multiplayer, I've never been the best multiplayer. I have my ups and I have my downs. But I gotta say, I've been getting better with every Call of Duty I've been playing. Up until this last one, Black Ops 2, when I started multiplayer, I just pretty much picked up where I left off with you know the previous multiplayer. I can't say the same about this one. For some reason I'm having a very hard time uh, uh, you know, getting a handle on this one. Uh, it feels like the guns in the multiplayer are different from the guns in the game. I just finished the campaign and literally 20 minutes later I jump into multiplayer and they feel it feels completely different. The way my character runs feels com completely different. So maybe I just have to give it more time to get a better handle on it but as of right now I'm having a really tough time. Um, they When I spawn in some of the maps I don't know which way is left or right because some of the maps in certain areas look exactly the same as certain areas on the other side of the map. It's very uh, symmetrical in my opinion. Um, there are some maps that are very specific, uh, but there are some where it's you're either on this side or that side, and they look the same. There is a map called Flooded, where this happens to me a lot on, where they'll spawn me and I'm facing uh, through a broken wall, and I'll run up to the wall, then I'll realize like, oh, that's the back of the map, because it looks exactly like the front of the map. Now, um, I don't play this, uh, you know, 10 days, 10 hours a day, you know, uh, you know, even 10 hours a week. But some players do, and they're able to catch on better. For me, as a player who I play, you know, a little bit every day, maybe a um, handful of hours a week, this is it's 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 taking a while for me to get a handle on it. So I don't. I want to reserve my judgment on this. Um, I've already have this feeling towards it but I want to suppress that and I want to like it I really do I like the campaign and I want to like the multiplayer so I want to give it more time but uh, 
for the beginner gamer, I know it's going to be tough out there. Somebody who's just getting into the first-person shooters, just getting into the multiplayer, it's going to be tough. So don't give up, guys. If you jump in there, don't rage quit. Give it a chance, and hopefully it'll grow on you. Overall, guys, the game, everything with it, multiplayer, single-player campaign, it's all really cool. I haven't had a chance to touch up the, to, you know, check out the squads yet, but I've been, you know, buying the characters, and I'm going to set that up as soon as possible so I can jump in that as well. I definitely recommend you guys going out there and giving this a shot, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy it. If you guys are like the single-player stuff, you'll enjoy that. If you're the multiplayer, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to pick it up pretty well if you've been playing it already, um, aside from myself, because I'm not that great. So give this one a shot, guys. I'm pretty sure you guys will like it. So that's it for the video game show this week, guys. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons down below. Remember to leave your questions, comments, and inquiries all in the comment section down below. And let's have a great conversation this week. We'll see you next time.